How's it going guys, Nick here for another Cinema 4D tutorial and today I'm just going to be doing a um, another little tips and tricks for the Vorone Fracture. Um, I've learned a little bit more so I just want to go over that a little bit and show you uh, kind of what you can do <clears throat> with some of these tabs and a couple um, little tricks for for your uh, animations or whatever you want to call them. So I just put a uh, Vorone Fracture on this cube that's acting like a wall. We can go ahead and stretch that a little bit. Alright, so we got so we got this cube. I'll just throw in a, a sphere. I'll make it like 50 maybe. And we'll just bring that up here. And I'm just going to set two keyframes. I'm going to set one here. And I'm going to set one like 10 frames later on the other side of the wall. Just so that we have uh, this animation of it going through the wall. Alright. Let's throw some simulation tags on here. Let's throw a rigid body tag on that one. And let's throw a, well, rigid body on both. But for the Verona fracture, we're just going to set the trigger to on collision. So that um, it doesn't just start falling apart before. Alright, so if we go ahead now and play... Oh yes, this should be, sorry, the sphere is going to be a collider. That's what's going on here. Alright, so it's going to go right through, and it's just going to break through the bottom. Like that. We're actually going to make this uh, back to the original size. It's a little bit big, so now we just need to keyframe it up higher. Like so. And now we'll get more of a uh, blast through this wall. All right, now let's go over some of these tabs with Verona Fracture. So this is our standard uh, Verona Fracture. It busts through this wall. Um, I can actually make the floor a collider so that all the pieces don't just fall through. So it busts through and everything falls down. That's just the standard. Uh, I just set the source to 200. That's what we get. All right, so now there's a few tabs here that we can go over. So there's this connector tab, which I kind of went over in my last tutorial about the bridge. And this, what this does is it adds a connector and it sets the breaking torque and the breaking force. So it um, takes a little bit more force to break some of these pieces off. So now it's a very, um, it's a much more condensed area that breaks. But what I learned is once you create a connector, there's also this, um, I believe it's this breaking weight. I believe it's that. It's either that or, yeah. In the uh, connectors, there's a breaking weight. And uh, there's a cool little feature that you can actually use in the MoGraph section. And it's this MoGraph weight paintbrush. So what you can do is once you select it, you'll see there's all these little um, circles that turn red. You can actually select which um, circles you want to apply which weight to. So right now it's set to 10. So let's say I set 100%. So that means it will not break. I'm just going to uh, make my radius of my paintbrush a little bit bigger. Let's say I made the uh, around the edges here 100%. So those won't break. I'm just going to come in a little bit more like so. So now what you do is you're going to drag this tag into the breaking weight and it's going to use this uh, weight map in consideration when breaking. So now it's just going to break in the middle like it was doing before. But let's say um, if I come back into the tag and have my paintbrush, there's an erase mode, there's a um, bunch of stuff here. So I'm just going to erase everything. And I don't know if it's just good. Yeah, so now most of it's going to break. So I can add, let's say I want this side to stand up. So I just paint this side. And now everything will break but that one side. 
and let's say I wanted um, this the other side to break but I want it a little bit stronger so I can paint it at about 25 percent and it's gonna stand up and I can paint this middle at 25 percent but since that took the direct damage it's gonna break so I can paint on the top here so it doesn't fall down you can add a race you can do all this stuff so you can you can set the weight map for what breaks and what doesn't so that's one thing that I found out which is um, really nice so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that tag uh, the other thing is that I found is uh, this geometry glue so what it does is there's multiple um, different uh, settings here one is the uh, fall off setting so if you go add glue fall off what it's gonna do is it's gonna um, turn it into one big piece so if I press play it just knocks it over there's nothing really exciting that happens but if you come to the fall off um, and you go to the fall off tab so this is like a MoGraph effector like a plane effector or a random effector where you can set the shape so right now it's infinite so the whole um, cube is just one but if I set this to box now I can set what I want to just be uh, one so if I make this bigger whatever's inside this cube is just gonna be one big piece like this here so you can uh, set certain areas that you want to break uh, to be smaller pieces whereas larger areas that don't necessarily need to break into small pieces you can set it like that which is really nice you can set it to linear, um, which is a little bit more difficult. There's just a bunch. There's the cone. There's a the sphere. Might be easy to show. So you you can see what I'm getting at. The um, other one is cluster. So what this is going to do? It's going to glue. Um, it's going to make these nice. Uh, random shapes so that when you break it it's not just one piece it kinda looks like it has some more detail to it and what you can actually do is up the amount of clusters in your piece so if I set this to like 500 uh, let's go 5000 and then I break this they're gonna be uh, a little bit different but the more um, clusters you have the the less randomized they're gonna be so that's that's pretty neat that one there and the other one is point distance and I believe it has something to do with these points but uh, the bigger you make it I think the less there are something like that so that's the glue tab uh, the other tab that I wanted to go over was this detailing tab so what this is gonna do is gonna add a little bit of um, variation and a little bit of uh, detail or surface noise to our object so if I go ahead and click enable detailing it's gonna take a second it's gonna calculate but now when we look you can see that our pieces have um, more detail to them they don't look as smooth they don't look as just fake they kinda of look more like rocks or pieces of earth and what you can do is you can um, set the turbulence to different turbulent noise to change the surface you can set the noise strength um, all this stuff here bigger smaller you can make so just like when you're using uh, noise on a material it's the same thing here you can set the maximum um, edge length which the lower it is the more polygons you need so if I turn garage shading lines on it gets pretty render intensive but as we get up here I believe it lowers it down so you can see there so the more you have there um, the more intense the render is going to be um, surface noise adds surface to the front of our object so if I turn that off I believe Um, I know someplace in here I had found before. I thought it was surface noise. Maybe I'm wrong. But there was one 
in here I th okay so the surface noise kind of just changes the um, the shape of it a little bit they're not so perfectly lines they're they change a little bit which you can see so if you look at this one here it's very straight and if I check surface noise on it gets a little bit uh, more organic and not so perfect in a way so that's detailing you can turn that off turn it on you can you can use it it's pretty neat and then uh, there's just a couple other things there's this uh, selections tab which I guess is good for uh, applying materials so I'm just gonna quickly I'll make one kind of a red and I'll make one this greenish color so what you can do with this and it's very nice is um, you can check the inside and the outside faces and it gives you the polygon selection tabs so this one's for the inside so if I were to apply my material to our Werner fracture I can actually go ahead and say okay I want the green to be an inside and then I drag our polygon selection into the selection of our um, texture tag and then I can do that same for the red and I can say okay I want the red to be on the outside so now when I come to our object in uncheck colorized fragments we get this kind of reverse watermelon coloring <clears throat> where it's all red and then when it breaks it's green so that's also a nice little feature that it does give you um, surface breaks is another one but I actually don't know what the surface breaks is considered it doesn't really show up I put it as like a purple might have to play around with that a little bit more but and uh, yeah and then the rest is just vertices and stuff like that but those are just a few little things that I found in um, the Verone fracture that I wanted to run past you guys and um, some of you might have known it know it already some of you might not but I figured I'd pass on the knowledge anyway Alright guys, hopefully you found this little tips and tricks for Veronary's Fracture useful, and I'll talk to you guys all next time. See ya.